Okay, breaking down the board is presented by 500 Level. We're really excited to introduce uh, a sponsor who's very near and dear to me, by the way, because if you watch me on Daily Wager, you, you watch me on this show, I'm always wearing these fun t-shirts. And as you can see, I'm wearing my Justin Herbert t-shirt. So log on go to uh go to their website again it's 500level.com and if you put in the code pfn20 you get 20 percent off 20 percent off whatever t-shirt uh nfl again nba major league baseball nhl as well as wrestling by the way we're ready to kick it off uh so let's bring in brett he's a part of the show each and every week and dalton miller as well is going to be uh, working behind the glass and utilizing the pfn 365 drop simulator and he'll pop in with those picks as well so brett you you're obviously you're back there dancing you excited for tonight i, I am so hyped for this look <laughs> a lot of guys don't know this the, the pfn mock draft simulator is the most traffic mock draft simulator on the market there's a bunch of them we do it better than anybody and so i'm extremely excited to showcase it tonight i'm going to be putting in steve's picks right on our mock draft simulator and then our lead nfl analyst dalton miller is going to be showing us what the algorithm itself would have picked in that same scenario It'd be very interesting to see what they do at number three It'd be really interesting to see what they do at number four let's get in to the pro football network 2021 nfl mock draft steve you yes. and the jacksonville jaguars are on the clock steve i think this is a no-brainer right yes number one player on my board best player quarterback i've seen in a long time uh trevor lawrence quarterback from clemson is now a jacksonville jaguar boom anita i don't have to ask if no. you agree or disagree no so that, that's I'm, that's yeah that's a done deal right there so what i'm going to do is bring in the newly full-time lead nfl analyst here at pro football network dalton miller and dalton uh tell us what the mock draft simulator algorithm says is going to happen at the number one day. so with the first first pick of the uh mock draft simulator the jacksonville jaguars select quarterback trevor lawrence it will never be anybody else than trevor lawrence in our simulator that's right it is a lock um it is literally impossible in the algorithm for the jacksonville jaguars to not just not take anybody else but they also cannot accept a trade for the number one pick um because our mock draft simulator has trades for free um okay we're gonna go back here steve you are now the general manager of the new york jets tell us what they're going to be doing with the number two pick yes they're gonna take zach wilson quarterback from byu we already right. discussed this many times on our show i would have stayed with sam darnold and surrounded sam with a lot of people but uh that's a moot point so we know they moved up they they moved their quarterback from three years ago to get another quarterback this is their guy zach wilson should be noted as the number five player on the pfn big board in the draft simulator anita agree or disagree with this pick? um i i do believe in my mock draft this is who i have i mean listen we live here in the new york new jersey area uh, we we are constantly told each and every day how in love Joe Douglas and that staff is with Zach Wilson. You know, the, the ceiling is the comparison to possibly Brett Favre. But I, I think that there's a lot of uncertainty here and there's a lot of concerns, especially since he, again, Steve, we've been talking about it, a uh, subpar comp in regard to playing at BYU and really, you know, no impressive wins against A, very good teams, let alone very good coaches. So I think this is a, a really big gamble here. I'm with Steve. Steve, I would have kept Sam Darnold a year. I would have traded out of that pick, accumulated more picks, maybe get a quarterback that I like even more than Zach Wilson a little bit later on in the draft. But nonetheless, I'm with Steve. The pick is in and it's Zach Wilson. Dalton, tell us what does the algorithm say? The algorithm tells us that with the second pick, the New York Jets will take Zach Wilson. Again, two for two that's, so far. that's one that's going to happen in the mock draft simulator every time. Yep, 100%. It's locked in. The Jets cannot do anything. They cannot trade the number two pick, and they cannot take anyone other than Zach Wilson in our mock draft simulator. Moving on to what is the most interesting pick, I think, so far, because there's a lot of mystery and intrigue around it. Steve, what is John Lynch and the San Francisco 49ers going to do with pick number three okay so they're picking number three the san francisco 49ers take quarterback justin fields from ohio Whoa, state boom 
Justin Fields. He's the number six player on the PFN big board in the mock draft simulator. He's going number three overall to the San Francisco 49ers if Steve were making the pick for them. But Anita, so as you said in the open, <laughs> what do you have the 49ers do? What, what do you want to say, Steve, before I make my... Again, th this is so much information is out there that I just don't believe. Now, as far as I would take the quarterbacks, I rated Mac Jones as my second best quarterback in this draft. I just don't think they're taking him to maybe upset the apple cart for you and everybody else out there. I'm taking the guy who I think they're really going to take. Uh, well, I do believe that they're going to take Mac Jones. I think that the 49ers have known that they want Mac Jones. I don't think they would have traded up and given up that much draft capital to move up, not knowing who they were going to select. Everything in, in regard to the conversations that I've had with former general managers, present general managers, scouts. There are scouts out there that don't understand why there's so much negative talk and chatter about Mac Jones. The comparables are to Joe Burr in a sense, right? Or you can say he did more with less than Tua, but yet uh, we were blowing up Tua last year, even to the point where there was conversations, should Tua have been the number one quarterback taken overall? And of course- I, I'm with you. I'm with you. I, I told you that the, to me, the most, the two most important things for the quarterback is processing information and accuracy. And the, these two quarterbacks between Justin Fields and Mac Jones, Mac Jones to me gets it on both side so why am i picking the other guy who i don't like as much because the upside and the long history with the head coach before all the pro days happened they made this trade to move up before they had all the information so what happens now if somebody outperforms somebody on the pro day they already had the inf they, they already knew who they were going to take i just believe that this is the kid they're going to take now okay. now if now if they don't take mac jones i'm being told it's trailing I'm being told that Justin Fields is out of the equation. That's what I'm being told. So I'm going with Mac Jones. If it's not Mac Jones, I believe it'll be Trey Lance, but I still believe that it is going to be Mac Jones. What does your simulator say? Dalton, yeah, what do we got for the simulator? As you know, Dalton, um, I'm very tight with the QB Collective crew. Justin Fields being a QB Collective camp member, QB Collective being run by Kyle Shanahan. Uh, what does the algo say? is going to happen with the 49ers at number three. Let's check it out. It Justin is Fields. Justin Fields. Very interesting to see what happens because that sets up a really insane possibility at pick number four with the Falcons with who's left on the board. But before we find out what the algorithm does, uh, Steve, you are the general manager of the Atlanta Falcons. You have the fourth pick. What are you doing at that pick? I have a veteran quarterback that still has a lot of gas in his tank. I have a, I still have wide receivers, two from the University of Alabama that can still play. I'm going to take a generational talent at the, at the tight end spot. I'm going to take the second best player in the draft. I'm going to take Kyle Pitts Kyle and really Pitts. open up our offense. Tight Kyle end from Florida. Kyle Pitts going number four to the Atlanta Falcons. If Steve Verderosa were to be the general manager of the Falcons, uh, should note Kyle Pitts is number three on the PFN Mock Draft Simulator big board. We still have Penny Sewell, number two overall, and Jamar Chase, number four overall, still available. Anita, agree or disagree with Kyle Pitts of the Falcons at four? Absolutely agree. And this has been one of the biggest topics for me. In my opinion, Kyle Pitts is the best player in this draft. Hands Over down. Trevor Lawrence. Over Trevor Lawrence. We had Kyle Pitts's coach on the show. Sorry. If you missed that, go back and, and, and watch. Brewster shared with us that he coached Antonio Gates with the Chargers and said that Pitts shows more, I mean, marinating that ceiling, for a minute. The, the more, ceiling is unlimited. The ceiling, exactly. So I just think Pitts is the best player in this draft. I don't know how Atlanta passes up on Pitts. Now, what am I hearing? I'm hearing that they could go quarterback there. Again, bring in a guy to play caddy to Matt Ryan. I'm also hearing that they're strapped in regard to salary cap this year and it gets worse next year. So do they want more rookie deals on their books? to lessen the load, that's a possibility. So are they gonna trade back and acquire more picks? I'm also hearing that. But again, to have Kyle Pitts and Julio Jones, especially in the red zone, no defense. I don't care who's on, who's on that defense. I, I, I just don't see a defense stopping them. So I'm going Pitts here as well. Okay, Dalton, uh, bring up the mock draft sim and uh, tell us what the algo has for Atlanta. Let's see who they take. They Jamar take Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase, which is a bit of a surprise because you'll see a little bit of Kyle Pitts here. You'll see a lot of, in this instance, Trey Lance uh, or Mac Jones as well. 
Um, like Anita said, they need quarterback, you know, to, you know, back up or, or for the future. We don't know, you know, it's tough with Matt Ryan's contract right now to get off that immediately, but you don't know the next time you're going to be picking at number four. So you might want to go out and get one. In this instance, they, uh, they get another ridiculous weapon with Jamar Chase. Cincinnati Bengals on the clock here. They have the fifth pick overall. Um, I have a feeling we're all going to agree, including the algorithm, but Steve, you're the general manager of the Cincinnati Bengals. Who are you taking at pick number five? Yeah, I, I'm the general manager and the owner, and I know the coach might want to have a certain player. I'm going to put my hand on his shoulder and gently say, young man, please sit back down. Because we're going <laughs> to... We're gonna we're gonna take Penny Sewell to keep our quarterback upright. Boom. So we're gonna we're gonna take the big offensive tackle to play 15 years, and so Joe Burrow doesn't have any more knee injuries. All right. Um, ditto, ditto. Uh, you know, especially after what happened last season and, and and how that season ended. And let's keep in mind, guys, this isn't just an ACL tear. Joe Burrow, like tore like everything possible in that knee okay uh chances are he's not going to start the season if he does he's going to start the season wearing a knee brace um you're going to need to protect that knee you went out this is your star quarterback this is your franchise this is the face of your organization he might be in 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 those offices blowing up everybody's phone saying i want jamar chase i want my teammate no 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 like you said steve sit down son because we have a responsibility to protect you. Um, I will say this, I've spoken to a few scouts that don't necessarily feel that Penny Sewell is the best offensive lineman out there, but regardless, I still think that is the first offensive lineman that will be selected, and I think he goes to Cincinnati at five. This guy's a really good player, this offensive tackle. And if you think about what's playing in our league, a lot of elite receivers were not first round picks. Michael Thomas, Okay, Stefan Diggs blew it up in Buffalo this year. He was a fifth round pick. You know, um, you, you take away uh, Mike Evans on Tampa, there's very few high first round picks, Julio Jones, that have played well for a long time. A lot of the receivers, are second, third, fourth round selections. I'm not saying that you don't take a stud, but this team needs a tackle. Take Always take a big man over a smaller man. Dalton? What does the algorithm say? Oh, man, I really hope that it goes with Penn A. Sewell because the best thing you can do for a young quarterback is protect him. Let's see. Jalen Waddle. That will not happen often in the simulator with Penn A. Sewell on the board. It is their number one need on the simulator as well. But with any algorithm, there are percentages, and this is the one time where the percentage goes with the receiver. Would Jalen Waddle, I mean, do you think Joe Burrow would be happy if he's if he is arguing for Jamar Chase and Jalen Waddle ends up being the pick? Does that satisfy at least the young quarterback? I don't I don't even think that's possible. No, yeah, me. I don't even I don't think that's possible. Pitts, Pitts, Pitts would be the play here. As well as Joe Burrow throws away from, from defenders leverage, his ability to throw guys open, Pitts being a guy who makes 50-50 balls, 80-20 balls, yep. I think that would be the pick, if anything. So here. Sewell and Pitts still on the board. The algorithm says Jalen Waddle. We got one of the rare ones, guys. Uh, Steve, <laughs> back to you. Okay. You are on the clock. It is now the Miami Dolphins. You are now in the body of Chris Greer. They have the sixth pick. We know they traded down from three to 12, back up to six. Late incoming rumors say they may be willing to trade back just a little bit more from six. But what are you doing if they stay on the clock with the six? I'm going to take Jamar Chase, wide receiver from LSU. Jamar Chase, he is, of course, still on the board. Uh, we know the Dolphins like him. And wow, would that be a great pick for them at number six to help Anita's favorite Dolphins quarterback to a tongue of Iloa. I, I agree with Steve. Uh, I, I think they do go Jamar Chase. Listen, they are committed to Tua. They they commit, they commit hitched their wagon to him last year, even though I was telling them, no, go Herbert. Um, they didn't listen to me, like I said. So they've got to do everything they can to bring in some better skilled position players around Tua. So I think that's what they do. Although, guys, again, I've been working the phones the last week. Plus, just like Brett said, there's a chance that they trade out of that. Uh, from what I understand, Arizona is looking to trade up, maybe get another wide receiver or a corner. Arizona wants to win now. Could that be a landing spot for them? Possibly. What about Denver and New England? Some people feel that uh, those are two teams that uh, that would be interested in, in a quarterback. 
Trey Lance is still on the board. Could that be motivation enough for New England to trade up there? Um, I don't know, but I, I do have the Dolphins taking Jamar. And another thing, again, talking to a few scouts, there's a few scouts who don't feel that Jamar Chase is the best wide receiver in this draft. Some feel that, that Waddle and Devontae Smith are. So interesting. Um, because... So don't don't be don't be surprised if it's not Chase. Don't be surprised if it's Devonte Smith. Okay. Don't be. I'm going Chase, but don't be surprised if it's Devonte Smith. Interesting because in the mock draft sim algorithm that Dalton's about to put up on the screen, Waddle is off the board. So yep. Dalton, what do we have the Dolphins doing with the number well, six pick? We got Pitts, Sewell, and it is Pitts at six. Guys, I can tell you, if you watch our show on Wednesday nights with Trey Wingo and Tony Pauline, if Kyle Pitts falls to the Dolphins at six, they would be ecstatic, according to the info that we have. Uh, that would be a home run pick. Even if Sewell were the pick to the Bengals at five, I think Pitts becomes the pick for the Dolphins at six. Again, where's the pivot point for this pick? Atlanta at four. What do they do in the mock draft simulator? They took Jamar Chase in Steve's uh, mock draft. He has them taking Pitts at four, so he's not available. So it's really interesting to see how now the mock drafts are starting to diverge off of just one decision. Steve, you're back on the clock. The Detroit Lions have the pick with number seven. Trey Lance is on the board. They, they just made the trade for Jared Goff. Jalen Waddle is on the board. Patrick Sertan, Rashawn Slater, Mac Jones, Devontae Smith. Where are the Lions going at pick number seven? All right, they have a new quarterback. They got a new regime and their number one wide receiver is gone. So we're going to take Stickman from Alabama. We're going to take Devontae Smith. Stickman. Because you, you well, he stepped on the scale for me in, in 2019. He was 168 pounds. And then the other day at the Indy recheck, he was 166 pounds. For me, it's just mind boggling, but you know, he is, trust your eyes, just watch the tape. He's an outstanding player. He's a great route runner. He's little Gumby. I mean, he just gets up and takes a hit and never really takes a hard hit. He's just so slippery, but he's a great player and they'll find a way to really take advantage of his skill set. They need to score some points. I'm going to take Devontae Smith. Tony, Tony Dungy and I, Anita, had a very interesting conversation yesterday, the two of us, about Devontae Smith and the comparisons to Marvin Harrison. Do you agree with this pick? And do you think he's worthy of a top 10 pick, given the frame, the slight frame that Steve has noted? Uh, again, I, you know, I'm just going to share with you s some of the, some of the uh, th some of the information that has been coming to me. All right. This is another spot where Detroit very well could trade out of. OK, mm -hmm. Ray Lance is, is still on the board. So therefore, I think there's going to be a lot of teams that are, are, are going to be blowing up their phone and could be offering the world for Trey Lance. OK, Denver, New England, those two teams, I can see that happening. Like I said as well, I'm hearing that Arizona might be looking to trade up. They want to win now. Could this new regime go offensive lineman, play it safe again? There's a number of people who don't feel that Penny Sewell is the best offensive lineman. Some people love Slater. Some people love Dickerson. I think that's a reach for Dickerson, but I am with Steve. I think they go Smith here. Again, I know there's been so much talk about his little toothpick legs, but the majority of scouts in and around the NFL are less concerned about his size. They love his route running. They think it's smooth. They can think he's, he's one of the best route running wide receivers they've seen in, in, in the last 10 years, if ever. So I'm with Steve. I think they take Smith here. Keep in mind, they made that trade with golf. Golf is there now. And Jared Goff is going to need some help so they don't have egg on their face giving up Matthew Stafford. So I'm with you. I think they take Smith. Dalton, what does the algorithm tell us for the Detroit Lions at pick number seven? They went Mac Jones here. Now, I agree. I think that they need wide receiver because when you look at that roster, it's completely bare. The cupboard is completely bare at wide receiver. But if they don't look at Jared Goff as the long-term answer and you have the quarterback there that you like, it's never a bad idea to go out and get your franchise guy. Mac Jones, who on this show, Anita and Steve both feel is the most NFL-ready quarterback aside from Lawrence, and he gets to step in right there in Detroit. Steve, we are going back to you. Pick number eight, Carolina Panthers. This has been an interesting team to look at so far in this draft process. Who do you have the Panthers taking at number eight? 
All right, so this week I went back and looked at two or three players that I really aren't very high on for a variety of reasons at each position that I looked at. But when you couple Carolina with their number one need of a tackle, couple that with Sam Darnold, right? Now they've invested in a new quarterback at Sam Darnold. I have them taking Rashawn Slater, offensive tackle slash guard from Northwestern as a plug and play guy at a couple of different positions. To me, he's undersized for tackle, lacks the lower strength and bulk to really be a guard. He's an exceptional athlete for the offensive line position, so they'll find a way to use him. They need some protection for their new quarterback. Anita, agree or disagree? I, I could totally see that happening. I've had a few scouts tell me they like Slater even more so than Penny Sewell. Um, I've had scouts tell me they think Vera Tucker is the best offensive lineman in this draft. I wouldn't be surprised if they go Vera Tucker, but brace yourselves because here's another thing I'm hearing. They may have made the deal and brought in Sam Darnold, but it's still a huge question mark. They really don't know what they have in Sam Darnold. This is where Trey Lance goes. Trey Lance is drafted by the Carolina Panthers. Wow, that would be a that would be just a huge bomb in the first round of the draft. Um, we're gonna be in Cleveland on site covering it in a war room in our hotel. And man, would that send us into a frenzy if Trey Lance ends up going number eight to the Carolina Panthers. And let well, me well to give to Anita some kudos, Sam is in the last year of his rookie deal. So he's really on a one-year show-me contract. So if Sam can't do it there, they can cut bait and move on. Yeah. But I, I, will, uh, I will tell you guys, I know the people that Anita knows. I know who Anita knows. And Anita knows some people. She knows some dogs, so she ain't speaking. <laughs> she ain't talking out the side of her neck right now. She's uh, she's being real with us. And, uh, listen, right, listen. So I, I, the I, here, here's the thing. I, I don't think Carolina knows what they're going to do right now, right? I, I mean, I don't think. And, and Steve, you could attest to this, right? At at eight. No, I, I don't agree with that. It's too close for them not to know what they're. They know I, what they're doing. I, they guys, just, I, they, what, what I what I mean by that is we don't know. Can can somebody trade with the Dolphins? Can somebody trade for Detroit? Oh, yeah. Trade up and get Trey Lance? They can. But I sure. think if Trey Lance is there and he's still on the board at eight, and the Carolina Panthers aren't getting overwhelmed with a ton of offers, I think they go Trey Lance. Dalton, tell us what does the mock draft simulator say is going to happen for the Carolina Panthers with the number eight? Now, now, we have, to have a trade. This is a trade. A Which simulated I trade. I, I did not know happened when you just simulated it all. Trey Lance is going eighth overall to the Washington football team, moving all the way up from 19 to get their guy. Which is what Anita was just talking about. We don't yeah. know if teams are going to make trades up because these quarterbacks are sitting on the draft. And here we go. The mock draft simulator algorithm has the Washington football team seeing Trey Lance sitting there at number eight, making a trade with the Carolina Panthers to get their guy. Man, I love when the simulator throws some curveballs at us. Makes this a lot of fun. Steve, we're coming back to you because the Denver Broncos now are on the number nine pick. What do you have the Broncos doing if they sit at number nine? It's about time we take some defense. We're going to take big, fast Micah Parsons, linebacker from Penn State. Interesting. Micah Parsons. Number one need, and the guy is too big, too fast, too athletic not to go here. Very, very interesting. We know Von Miller didn't play at all last year. He's uh, he's certainly not uh, the, the youngest anymore. And when we look at team needs for the Denver Broncos, uh, we are able to see that, yes, linebacker and edge are their top two needs when you click on the team needs part of the mock draft simulator so really really interesting that that's your pick there definitely fits anita what do you think about it? I, this this is tough um again because I, I think that there's a lot of options here for for denver um you know a lot of people think denver is in the market for a quarterback but i'm hearing that drew Locke is spending a lot of time in the offseason working with peyton manning uh and they're happy with what they've seen uh, I think they do, and, and here's another thing. Take a look at this Denver roster. This Denver roster is, is is nothing to shy away from, and of course we know uh, they typically go undefeated uh, in, in in the month of September at home. So I think this is a team that really can compete, and I think they give Drew Locke another year to see what he can do. There's a lot of different ways they can go here. They can trade down, I believe. That could be a huge option for him, them. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, offensive line, as well as corner 
but Later is still on the board for me. Penny Sewell's been the only offensive lineman taken. So I, I see the Denver Broncos. I see the Denver Broncos taking Slater here. Offensive mm. lineman. Slater, we know Juwan James oft injured both in Miami and in Denver. Also opted out last year after ending the previous season for Denver on injured reserve. Makes total sense to uh, to get Rashawn Slater in there. Um, Dalton, tell us, what do we have for the, um, for the mock draft simulator? The mock draft simulator has the Denver Broncos selecting... Christian Darisol, offensive tackle from Virginia Tech. Okay, not the offensive tackle that Anita chose, but is in line with Anita's thinking of taking an offensive lineman. Um, very interesting that the algorithm saw fit to bump up Darishaw um, with both uh, Sewell and Slater still on the board in the mock draft si simulator algorithm. So very interesting that they went there um, Really excited to see where they end up putting Sewell and Slater. But Steve, we're back to you. This pick seems like a lock based on what we're hearing. This seems to be the first where we see uh, maybe the second defensive player coming off the board. But Steve, I will leave it to you to make the pick for Big D, Dallas. Are going to take for me the third best player in the entire draft. They're going to take Patrick Sertain second. Okay, cornerback from Alabama. Talk about a plug and play guy. This guy, this guy was ready to go out of the womb. He's really good. He is really good. Yep, his dad, Dolphins legend, Patrick Sertan Sr. Uh, yep. Anita, this seems like a foregone conclusion. This is what I've been hearing all the buzz about. I've seen this this exact pick mocked thousands of times. Anita, what are you saying about Patrick Sertan for the Dallas Cowboys at number 10? Yeah, I, I know I know the big storyline out there is that the Dallas Cowboys and Jerry Jones is in love with uh, Pitts and is going to do everything he can to trade up and go get Pitts. Their defense is in, in is in such disarray. They they need a they need starters. B they need depth. You know, really, what the Dallas Cowboys should do is trade down, to be quite frank, and, and, and accumulate more defensive players, in my opinion. But I'm with Steve. I think they go Patrick. Uh, to me, Patrick is. Uh, the best defensive player in regard to all around checks all the boxes character athleticism best at his position no off the field issues he's the safest pick and and i think he's the best pick and i think he's the first defensive player selected so i'm with steve i think patrick goes to dallas okay dalton what's the algo tell us let's check it out and a soul offensive tackle from oregon guys every year there is a player we think is going to go in the top five and they take a massive slide down the board. And in the mock draft simulator, they're telling us it is Penny Sewell. It seems like with the with the Broncos taking Darashaw, okay, that the Cowboys are anticipating a run on offensive tackles, and they grab Penny Sewell, who many think to be a top five pick in this draft. <laughs>